Hi, this is Joe Rabel from Rabel Stock Research with your Daily Five. On today's show, I'm going to show you what I am seeing in the S&P 500 chart in multiple time frames. Then I'm going to look at two bearish individual stocks and two bullish individual stocks. So let's go ahead and get going with your Daily Five. I'm cheating a little bit. I'm calling this one one chart. Uh, this is one of our daily five. Uh, and I've got all three time frames up. I got a monthly long term chart on the left. In the middle, I've got an intermediate term uh, weekly chart. And then on the right is a daily short term. Um, the reason why I wanted to do it this way is because I think what's happening is is pretty interesting in the way this is developing. Because if you notice all three time frames, price is caught in between the two moving averages right now okay now this time frame the moving averages are rising but the 18 is losing a little bit of slope here in this time frame the moving averages are declining but this is actually starting to show this 18 starting to show a loss of a little bit of slope now if you look at the daily time frame this one's rising but the 18 is flattening out on this time frame so we've got three different time frames kind of giving us uh, some interesting patterns now i want to look at the macd for a second because um if you notice we've we got uh, we got pretty extended away from the zero line all right. I mean, this is this is pretty far when we started the year and we worked off a lot of that by coming all the way down to the 40 month moving average and getting a bounce. So we were real extended and now we're trying to work that off. But if you notice, these two time frames are declining. I'm sorry. These two MACD lines are declining right now. And that is that is putting weight on any kind of a rally to the upside. It's very difficult for a, a chart or a trend or a market to move up when the MACD lines are going in the opposite direction. Now, it can do it for a, for a period of time, but when they're going downward, you have to assume there's resistance up here and the momentum is going against it, not for it. Now, if you look at what happened on the weekly, in the same way this got extended to the upside, when we got the decline phase, we got extended to the downside here. We got pretty far from the 18-week, especially here at this low. And MACD got stretched away from the zero line to the downside. So just like we got stretched away to the upside here, we got stretched to the downside here, and now we're working our way back on this time frame. So the intermediate term time frame was oversold, and it's trying to work off that oversold condition by rallying up. Um, it also rallied up to the 40 in the downtrend line, and it's failing there, and it, again, is caught in between these two lines in the opposite way that the monthly is caught here. Now, look at what's happened recently. Because we got such a big, fast rally off the low, now the daily time frame got stretched away, the MACD got stretched away from the zero line, and w now we're caught in between here because this time frame is trying to work off this overbought condition formed by this daily MACD. So I think if you understand what's taking place, um, we've got, uh, we've got an, a long-term time frame with a lot of resistance overhead. OK, in the intermediate term, we've got pretty good support somewhere down in the zone, probably thirty nine, four thousand, something like that. When we look at the daily, um, we've we've created new resistance now with the way this has dropped down. It, it's not likely that this is just going to fall apart based on the fact that the the way the ADX played out. I, I wouldn't expect that. But what's happening is you're creating overhead resistance issues because of this decline on this time frame. So it seems to me like what makes sense here is that we're going to come down somewhere into this 3,900, 4,000 zone, and we're going to see what happens. Now, now, if it's possible, not saying it's probable, I think it's possible we could come down and, and, come, and make a new low here. But if that happens, MACD is going to make a higher low. We're going to get a massive amount of divergences to take place. We did not have divergences at this low. There were no divergences. All, all the, Mac, all the uh, momentum signs confirm the low. So if we do fall apart here and really get hit hard, it is going to create the likelihood of some kind of a, a pretty important bottom developing. Now, I think the higher probability is this is going to come down to this area, rally back up, and kind of form some kind of a channel before it makes a decision on whether it wants to go up here 
or go down. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if you look at the way um, it's played out, this is a pretty strong move off the low. And there were a lot of stocks showing a lot of strength, that it, even more strength. And I'm going to show you a few examples of that on the way up. So we're not really sure right now, looking at it this way, it could be developing where this is forming a big top and rolling over. It could be setting up where this is going to pull back and break through this downtrend line and really kind of turn things back to the upside. So uh, what I would tell you is be very careful about having a big, strong market opinion right now. Uh, we need to remain fluid right now. Uh, right now in the short term, I think we have a negative bias because of what happened to the short term momentum signs. Um, but uh, we've got some support coming down somewhere around 3,900, 4,000 is what I'd be looking for. All right, let's go ahead and start looking at a few stocks here. Now, I wanted to show a couple negatives to start because right now we've rallied up, right? If we go back and look at the S&P, we've made this big rally to the upside. So right now, I'm inclined to want to be selling weak stocks or even potentially shorting them based on the way they're setting up. If you look at what this has done, this is DXCM, it, it's been rallying up, but there's absolutely zero strength in the buyers. The ADX can't even get above 25. This has moved up for three or four months to the upside, and we just don't have any strength here. Now, if you look at what's happened on this time frame, it's gone counter trend to what's going on on the weekly. The weekly just worked off an oversold condition. We still have declining moving averages. We've got strong ADX. So the fact is, is that if we get any kind of a little break here and a, a 18 rolling over, I would view this as an opportunity to be uh, to look at as a potential short if it plays out the right way. Either way, I would consider it a sell. Um, and I wouldn't wait for any kind of a rally or anything. I'd probably just be a seller here. Let's look at MU because um, this is another one where if we look at the strength of the rally, look at look at how ADX really couldn't get going during this rally phase. I mean, this is not what we want to be looking for. We have a stock that failed at resistance here on this rally. It has no momentum to the upside. And you can see that it's failing at the 18 week as well. Now, we're at a pretty critical point when you look at the longer term uh, longer term signs. We're, we're right around, we're kind of pivoting around this key level around 60. I think that that is a troubling sign if we do see weakness here. I think, again, the best way to play this is let this move up and then look for a little lower high to develop as a potential shorting chance. Uh, DEN. So we're going to look at a couple really bullish patterns now. I mean, look at what uh, Denberry is doing. This is in the energy area. A lot of energy stocks look like they need a little bit more time to consolidate. We might see one more pullback in that area, generally speaking. But when I look at this stock, look at how this drove off the low. Look at how the MACD is turning up. Look at how a green DI is breaking out for the first time all gear. Look at the power behind the ADX in this move. So we're looking for some kind of a little dip, higher bottom, something like that to form above the breakout area. And I think that would be a great opportunity uh, to be on the lookout for that. Now, the one thing I'll say is if the market's really ugly, okay, and it decides it wants to really sell off here, this stock is going to come in like a rocket ship to the downside, just fall to the downside. And, and there's not going to be an entry because I'm not going to just buy on the way down. I'm going to look for this to hold this 18 and turn back up like that. So some sign of an uphook of some sort. And then I'll have a little bit more confidence that this is holding support. We also want to look at it relative during the pullback. Does the relative line continue to hold up in here um, or does it give way? And really, people start to use this as a chance to get out. Uh, but right now it's holding up like a champ. The other stock I want to look at is this uh, ALB. I mean, this stock is up today. Um, another really powerful looking pattern. Look at this long-term pattern found support at the 18 month, strong ADX condition, nice base formed. And then on the weekly chart, we're we, we came down and tested 200 twice and now have turned up. And uh, we're trying to kind of hook around here. You can see on the daily chart, we're getting that little hooking pattern with a strong ADX condition. 
Um, so I think this is really attractive in the way that this, this is setting up. Uh, definitely some of these specialty chemicals in the lithium area and stuff like that are holding up really well. Um, I think I would keep an eye on these. Um, this is a little premature in a way because the market probably has a little bit more downside in the short term. But overall, this is really a stock I'd be watching pretty closely. So I hope you enjoyed this segment. You can contact me through LinkedIn or find my research on rablestockresearch.com. In addition, if you'd like to learn more about Trend, MACD, and ADX and multiple timeframes, I have a YouTube channel and a book called Invest Like a Pro, which delves into this subject. Have a great trading day, and I'll see you next time. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.